Hello Year 5, happy Tuesday. Um, just a quick video today because I want you to get on with the work. But what we're doing today is rounding up all the work we've been doing on multiplying and dividing by powers of 10. So today we're going to do a bit of reasoning, we're going to use some of our new knowledge. Okay, so we're still multiplying and dividing by 10, 100 and 1000, but we're going to be putting that into some reasoning problems as well as just practicing the skills too. OK, so the first thing I want you to do. Is I want you to have a go just on a scrap piece of paper, or a whiteboard, if you've got one of using the numbers and symbols I've given you here to just write some calculations out. And there are lots of different examples. Don't forget the answer can go at the beginning because the equal sign just means everything on one side is the same as everything on the other side so it doesn't have to be something times something equals it could be something equals something times something or something equals something divided by something you could even do something times something equals something divided by something and do a balance equation like that if you want to do some greater depth so just a quick quick example i'm going to do 12 times 10 equals uh, 120. I could then do a greater depth by actually thinking I'm going to change it to a balance equation. So I'm going to have to go into the line underneath because I haven't got room, but I'm going to do 12 times 10. Now what I want to do is make everything on the other side also equal 120. So I'm going to do uh, 1200 divided by 10. And I know that both of those equal 120. So just pause and spend a few minutes having a go at writing some equations. And if you want to do some greater depth, have a go at those. There's also a speaking frame here. Because I'm multiplying, I know my number will get bigger. Because I am multiplying by 10, I know my digits will move one place to the left. Uh, I do or do not need a placeholder because, um, and there's some words down there that you might want to use. So that speaking frame is really useful as well. So pause, spend a few minutes writing out some calculations. Okay. So some of you will have already done this. I've got a bit of ahead of myself here. Can you combine multiplying and division? Can you create statements that balance? Now, that's what I've just done is that greater depth. So, in fact, I think they've got almost the same example. Uh, actually, it's slightly different here because they've got two within the same and they've still got the answer. So it is a bit different to what I did. So they've done 12 times 100, but then divided it by 10 to give them 120. Or one similar to I did, 12 times 100 equals 120 times 10. So this is a having a go at the, the, um, the balancing equation. So I did get a bit, of, a bit ahead of myself, didn't I? I forgot this was coming up. So these are some other options you could have done. So if you want to pause now and go back and have another go, um, maybe at doing some like that top one, you can have a go at doing that now. OK, we're going to do just a little bit of fluency together first, and then I'm going to give you some reasoning problems. So just have a look at these diagrams. What's happened here is it's showing you that this is circular. So 4.03 multiplied by 10 equals what? And then, of course, if you take that number you've just found and divide it by 10, you'll get back to 4.03 uh, because it's the inverse. So on all of these, what I want you to do is find that missing number. Here, you're going to have to divide by 10 and then check that when you multiply by 10, you get back to 0 0.2. Uh, over here, multiply it by 100 and check that your answer gets back to uh, 21.7 when you divide by 100. And here, you've got to divide by 100 and then check that when you multiply that number by 100, you get back to 5,806. So fill in the missing number. Pause and have a go at that now and then I'll give you the answers. Okay, so here are the answers to those questions. Um, 
you know I'm very good at making mistakes and the children in school have been pointing that out to me, but I have checked these. Do correct me if I'm wrong, though. OK, um, I should have warned you to pause that last slide, so quickly go back if you didn't have time to mark it. Here are some more fluency questions before I leave you to get on with um, some reasoning. There's only about three, four, three or four reasoning questions, so it's not lots. OK. So the first ones, again, are just some fluency, filling in the missing numbers. Again, they're working backwards here. What did I divide by 100 to get to 5? So you've got to do the inverse. So instead of multiplying by 100, divide by 100. Here, instead of multiplying by 10, divide by 10. Here, instead of dividing by 100, multiply by 100. So to work backwards, you've got to do exactly the opposite thing. And remember, multiplying and dividing are the opposite of each other. So do the opposite to find the answer. Don't be throwing that the answers at the beginning. Forget that. Ignore that. Put it at the end if it confuses you. Something times 100 equals 273. Do not worry the answers at the beginning. That makes no difference. So what did I times by 100 to get to 273, work backwards, divide by 100. And the last four, you've got these four um, sort of calculations. You've got to use each one once in these four boxes. So 543, either multiply, divide by 10 or 100, equals 5.43. Well, immediately I can see it's getting smaller, so it's going to be divide. But which divide? Divide by 10, divide by 100. You can only use each one once. OK, pause and have a quick go at these um, and the answers will be on the next page. OK, here are the answers. Again, double check them if you've got something different, because it might be that I've gone wrong. Um, here are the answers. What I'd like you to do once you've marked these is have a go on the uh, the Google Classroom. I've just put a few reasoning questions up, some word problems for you. Uh, so I just want you to have a go at those and see how you do. And we are now finished for the moment on multiplying and dividing by 100, 10 and 1000. But it comes up all the time, so please don't forget it. It will come up when we do more decimals, it will come up when we do fractions, it will come up when we do percentages. It comes up all the time, so don't forget this. It's such an important skill to have, and it comes up in SATs all the time as well. I know I shouldn't use the S word, but it does. So it's a really, really important skill to have. Okay, have a go at those reasoning questions and have a good rest of your day.